Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here. Um, as you can tell, somewhere a little bit different. I'm in Seoul, South Korea. Um, yeah, you can probably tell. No on-air sign, no blue wall. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, not the greatest view, unfortunately. Last time I was in Seoul two years ago, I had this incredible view of the city. This is a lovely, really lovely hotel. I'm very fortunate to be in this one. But unfortunately, the view is just of another building. Um, and I also have what looks like a kind of a therapy couch kind of thing a psychiatrist couch behind me um which i guess is kind of fitting because sometimes people say these videos are a little bit therapeutic they're certainly therapeutic for me at times when i really want to rant and get things off my chest so yeah of course korea korea is um, everything i remembered it being two years ago it's, it's a fabulous place brilliant place um and i mean i only arrived yesterday so i haven't had too much time to kind of look back around again but uh yeah, yeah, it's uh, very fortunate to do things like that, and I'm fully aware of it. Um, and also kind of getting to see a little bit behind the scenes, like the interviews that we had to do in Tokyo, as they often are, were kind of in and around the team hotel. So you kind of get to see a little bit more of the dynamics and the bonding. You see that in the open training as well, but you also kind of get to see a little bit away from that. And it's just this really nice vibe about this group. It's a much younger group of players. You know, there's only... I mean, uh, 31 now that Ruddy Dragashin has joined them in in uh, Seoul. And it's a probably average age. I mean, you take out Sonny. Poor Sonny is probably the oldest. I think he is the oldest player now, 32 years old. Um, if you take kind of his age out of it, bearing in mind, you know, Hoybier is not here. Uh, Romero probably would have been one of the older players as well had, had he been there. Probably Madders. Yeah, Madders and uh, Basuma are probably up there. The average age is probably around the 20 mark, 21, I would imagine. Someone with, you know, far more time is probably able to actually look at that. But there are so many 19-year-olds. Obviously, we know about the 18-year-olds and a certain 16-year-old in Mikey Moore as well. And just kind of just getting the vibe amongst them all and going out to some of these appearances they have to do. They're just a really tight-knit bunch because you've got the senior players who obviously know each other very well. You've got the under-21s who obviously know each other very well. And there's this really nice blend when you put them together. They're not like clicks or anything like that. They're all really mixed quite nicely from what I've seen. Not for the now, for January. But uh, Yan Min Hyuk uh, is joining Spurs as we've kind of... Uh, I think if I mentioned that on the last video, I probably didn't. But I did speak about it in the podcast with Guesty uh, from Tokyo. So, yeah, Yan Min Hyuk is joining from Gangwon. Uh, subject to work permit and international clearance is interesting because there's two different spellings of his names out there as is yangmin hyuk which is h y e o k and there's one with a u instead of the eo from what i understand his passport um has the eo on it so that's the one we're using uh and you'll sometimes see it as min hyun yang so min hyuk yang but as with sonny son hyun min put the yang first so I'm guessing he'll be called Yang when he's at Spurs. Uh, only turned 18 in April. He's agreed a contract until 2030. He will join in January, um, as I put out in the week. And yeah, he's had a brilliant maiden season in the K-League. Despite, like I say, he's only been 18 for like a, a, few, a couple of months, three months of it. He's got eight goals, four assists in his 25 games so far. After the deal was announced, or was it the night before? Uh, I can't remember now. The days merge into one here. But he, uh, yeah, scored a brilliant goal. <laughs> it's like, what a way to kind of announce yourself with all the spotlight on you as well. I think maybe it hadn't quite gone through yet, I think, when that was uh, that was going. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, don't mind talking about this if I'm having a conversation with someone. Is there? There's no one else in here with me. Um, yeah, so Gang One has said it's the highest transfer fee for a player who went directly to Europe in the history of Korean football. We're not entirely sure of the exact figure. I've seen figures ranging from 7 million euros to 4 million euros. Uh, the Gangwang CEO, uh, Kim Byung-ji, has said he can't reveal it as there's a secret clause. Korean media have kind of estimated the fee around the 4 million euro mark, the lower end. It could be that maybe there's add-ons, I don't know, which is why there's that 7 figure out there as well. Uh, Kim Byung-ji said, we can't reveal the transfer fee, but it was the highest figure for all Korean players. Uh, of any Korean player who moved to Europe from the K-League directly. So, yeah, 
very exciting young player. You can understand the Son comparisons in terms of his football because he's a winger who can play on either side. He's pacey, he can dribble, he's got terrific finishing ability. Um, and yeah, he's, he's had an amazing maiden season. So he'll come in January, a couple of months after the K-League season finishes, um, and we'll get to see kind of where he's at. Looking forward to kind of, I probably won't have to ask Sonny anything about him because I'd imagine the Korean media will do that all for me. Um, but it'd be interesting to know whether Sonny feels he'll be ready in January. Certainly the player is looking to be ready in January to start playing as quickly as possible for Spurs. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a step up. I mean, he hasn't played for the senior South Korean national team yet. I think he might even be for the under-17s is, is his kind of highest level at the moment. But he is kind of smashing it, for use, uh, for, for want of a better phrase, right now in the, in the K-League. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's see what what happens. I think we'll all be watching him quite closely um, over the next couple of months. He's it's interesting because like Bergvall, he he's not on loan. He hasn't been signed on loan back. He's uh, they've agreed a deal that will go through in January with Bergvall. It was in the summer, um, so he is still a Gang One player, and we'll see. Um, I mean, technically, he is in the squad for the uh, Team K League for um, Wednesday night here in Seoul. So we might see him immediately. That would be interesting because, like, what do you do? do? You know, does he does he play out of his skin against the, you know, Spurs? Does he, like, kind of really want to prove a point? Or would he be worried about, like, injuring a Spurs player? And, yeah, or will there be, like, direct comparisons between him and Son? There's like, kind of loads of little kind of subplots to it, which would be fascinating. Um, and whether he plays, you know, he is going to be one of these younger players in the group. May only get a couple of minutes. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we'll see. He's uh, certainly a very interesting prospect, and another one that I think the data has clearly um, has hap uh, has kind of showed that he's going to be a bit of a could be a potentially a star. The legendary uh, Korean journalist Sungmo um, Sungmo Lee, who is a uh, who's been out on this tour as well, he got Sonny in the mix zone while we were doing the press conference. And, and he asked him about the young players. Uh, he asked Sonny and Sonny said, uh, I believe there are players, this was all of them, I believe there are players with a great future and they're training really hard. When I see them, they remind me of when I was at that age. Um, I'm trying to help them and give advice to them. For sure, they have great talents. and I think we better not expect too much from them. Um, enjoying their development while watching their play. Um, and look, I did feel like Postacoglu kind of did them down a little bit, uh, did down the youth a little bit towards the uh, no, about midway through last season, I think it was, uh, when I asked him about them. And I kind of felt that at the time. It's like, I get what he was trying to say. He was trying to say that the reason they're having to buy in players like Bergvall and, and now we've seen Gray was because there wasn't quite this production line. I do wonder whether he slightly underestimated what was coming through, perhaps. And, and obviously from then on, they had this... Uh, terrific end of the season. They won the uh, the playoffs in Premier League two as well. Um, so uh, so yeah, it's um, I think I think they're a bit better uh, than he gives them credit for. Man of Solomon, yeah, I haven't quite seen him explode. He hasn't quite got that explosiveness that he had yet, but that's understandable. Ten months out with the knee problems, um, he's gonna. He's going to take a little while to uh, to get back to where he was, absolutely. Um, obviously, he was involved in the goal. But, yeah, just maybe haven't, hasn't got that uh, that danger, that threat that he quite had uh, yet. But hopefully that will come the sharper he gets. I mean, if he needs to look at being dangerous, just look at Sonny. You know, the man he replaced on the left. Sonny, again, so good. Could have had a couple of goals. Got one in the end, which was lovely. Mm -hmm.